As a standard for any Zelda game, we are going to want to implement a health system where hearts are displayed in the corner of the screen. If Link takes any damage, the hearts will start to disappear, indicating that Link is closer to dying. It's also worth mentioning that Link can take partial damage, such as half of a heart, which is something that we'll definitely need to consider as we plan out how to implement this. Displaying a health UI such as Zelda's heart system involves keeping track of a couple different values. The first one is the max number of hearts that Link can have. For instance, at the start of most Zelda games, Link starts with three hearts. So we could say Link's max hearts property is three. We'll also need to know what Link's current health is at. If he's at full health, this value will match the max hearts value. But as he takes more damage, this value will get closer and closer to zero. And it's also this value that will determine how many filled hearts are displayed to the screen. Let's start implementing this. I'm going to give Link a max hearts property and start it off at three. And also a simple hearts property, which as a reminder, tracks Link's current health. And this will initially be set to the same value as max hearts, indicating that he is at full health. Now let's actually use these values to draw the hearts to the upper left corner of the screen. The plan for this is to draw filled hearts for all of Link's current health, and if there's any difference between that and his max hearts, we'll fill in the blanks with empty hearts. To start the process, let's first draw the filled hearts. Let's start by getting the position right and just drawing one filled heart just to start. I have this image of the filled heart, and we're just going to draw it at position 10, 10. Remember, if you're using a camera, this draw needs to happen outside of the camera, since this is part of the HUD, and this 1010 is in reference to the game window. Here's what this code looks like when it's run. Now let's get the rest of the hearts drawn. This can be accomplished by using a for loop, iterating through the number of hearts that Link has. It'll end up looking like this, for loop from 1 to player.hearts, essentially meaning the number of hearts we draw will match player.hearts. In this case, three hearts will be drawn, because the loop will happen three times. If we try to run this as is, we'll see that it isn't much different than before. Our loop is working, we are drawing three hearts to the screen, but they're all being drawn at the same position, so all three hearts are right on top of each other, making it look like just one. To fix this, we'll need to offset each heart drawn to the right by a little bit, so that there's no overlap. First, we want to get the width of these heart images that we're drawing to the screen. Then, when actually drawing the hearts, we want to calculate an offset for the current iteration's heart by using i. For instance, if i was 2, then this offset value would be equal to 2 heart widths away from the left side of the screen. Since i increases by 1 each heart that is drawn, it will put each heart in the perfect position. Then when drawing, we just need to add this offset value to the x position. If we run now, we'll see that all three hearts are showing up correctly, but they're a bit snug together. This can be fixed by simply adjusting our width variable that we created earlier. I'll just add 10 to it, and that should provide a big enough buffer. That's much better. We will also see that if I increase or decrease player.hearts, our UI that we just created will adjust along with it. The next thing I'd like to look at is displaying the empty heart container for any lost hearts. If our max hearts is 6, but our current hearts is 4, we should show two empty hearts at the end. We can easily build off our current loop to get this working. First off, instead of iterating from 1 to player.hearts, we'll instead go to player.maxhearts, meaning we may iterate past Link's current heart count. Next, we need to decide what heart image to draw, filled or empty. We can determine this by looking at i. If the value of i is less than or equal to Link's current heart count, then we'll draw that heart as filled. If i is greater than Link's current heart count, then that means we're dealing with an empty heart, and we should change the sprite to reflect this. I'm also going to bump up the max heart's value to 6 just to demonstrate this better. At this point, we could call this heart display finished, but there is one more piece to this, and that's the half heart. In most of the Zelda games, Link can take half a heart of damage, and I'd like to get this implemented here too. 
Essentially, if Link's current heart count is at, say, 4.5, that 0.5 is going to display half a heart. This can be done in a similar fashion to displaying the empty heart images. In addition to checking if player.hearts is greater than i, we'll also check to see if player.hearts minus i is equal to negative 0.5. If so, then this means the current heart in the iteration is a half, and we should change the sprite to show this. Now, whenever I decrease or increase player.hearts by 0.5, we'll see that the hearts displayed will be half hearts. At this point, the heart display system is complete. When it comes time to implement enemies, we can program in the logic to damage Link. And when this happens, the hearts displayed on the screen will automatically update to display Link's heart count. The code from this video and all other videos in the series can be found on GitHub. Check the description for more details. Thanks so much for watching. I wanted to get this video out there since a good health UI can be applied to almost any game. Let me know if you have suggestions for future videos.